Are you ready to unlock the power of God in your life? Welcome to Hightower Ministries Podcast. I'm your host, Karen Ordeen, and I, along with my husband, Bill, will bring forth prophetic preaching and teaching that will unlock a deeper revelation of God's Word. So get ready for a powerful word that will raise your faith to believe God for more in your life today. Hello and welcome to Testimony Tuesdays. I'm Apostle Kara. And I'm Apostle Bill. We're Hightower Ministries and we're so glad that you're here with us today. Today we're sharing a testimony that begins in abandonment and tragedy yet ends with healing and deliverance in fact this broadcast there will be two testimonies that will be shared it was also a prophetic word of the lord that brought forth an unfolding of events that changed the dynamics of our whole family apostle bill are you ready to share your testimony today yes i am you know i just want to speak to everyone out there right now that has abandonment issues uh, from a father figure that may have not even been in the picture at all. Uh, I believe that my story tonight is going to help a lot of people get free from feeling uh, trapped in a uh, a complete repetitive um, uh, cycle of unforgiveness. Um, You know, unforgiveness is something that really can cause a lot of pain in your life that um, you really don't deserve. And I know that uh, a lot of you have been raised without fathers. Uh, many of you had some type of relationship with, with your father that may have been uh, something that wasn't uh, really the best uh, uh, f- you know, figure, father figure. Maybe not um, the best example. Yeah, not, not the best example. But I, I, I believe that once you hear um, what uh, I had gone through with my father, um, I, I believe that you're going to have an understanding of who the Father is in heaven and how I found the Father in heaven and how it's changed my life. Amen. And, uh, you know, I, I think that having the ability to know the Father in heaven has made me mm-hmm. uh, be a father here. Absolutely. You know, be a good husband Absolutely. and be a good father to our children. Yes. Um, and I, I believe that this is going to really be a, a, a big help for everyone here tonight. And I know it's going to set a lot of people free and give you that ability to, to feel that burden lifted off of you. Amen. And, amen. So, uh, and, and learn to lean on the Lord. That's right. Yeah. Amen. We've got to, that's something we have to learn how to do. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And we first, we first have to find out who he is. Yeah, yeah. Find him as father. Yeah. So we're, we're going to start tonight by sharing about your father mm-hmm. and, uh, and who he was. Yeah. Because, you know, he was considered a, a American hero. His, his story and the details surrounding it is taught to many in the military in their training for operations and diplomacy to this day. That's right. We ran into to people that said, I just learned about your father. And uh, it, it just it blows people's minds, but it, they're still using it, oh, the story, absolutely. because there's a lot to learn about yeah. your dad. Mm-hmm. And uh, so please tell us a little bit about your father. Yeah, well, you know, the sad thing is they're, they're using the story about what happened to my dad (laughs) um uh to help them not find themselves in that situation again that's that's right exactly (laughs) yeah that's a tough thing so my dad um he was captain william edward nordine Uh, i'm william edward nordine the second uh he was a naval officer in uh, the united states navy and uh his last assignment was uh in greece so he was a naval attache there at, at the American Embassy in Greece. That's right. And so, um, you know, my dad came from a very small town uh, up in Wisconsin, a uh, very small population. And, you know, he really wanted to uh, to make something of himself. And, and you know, he, his, his desire was not to live in that town. That's right. You know, so he really worked hard with his academics uh, and through college and everything and found himself uh, joining the Navy uh, as an officer, you know, after graduating college. And um, he became a naval uh, helicopter pilot. And most of his career, he did that. And he spent time as an instructor in the Navy uh, and actually did some time over in England, which it took us to England. That's right. Uh, he was an instructor uh, for uh, the Royal Naval uh, Helicopter Pilots over there. They were training 
on the various helicopters that um, were in use. And so he helped wow. instruct them. And, you know, he was very devoted to his career in the military. Mm. Yeah. Praise God. You know, Captain William Edward Nordeen, it's, it's, it's really strange for me to say that. Yeah. Uh, all, of our, all of our marriage, it's been hard because you're a second. And, yeah. uh, and I never really got to meet my, my father-in-law. Mm -hmm. But I, I've I've learned about him, and uh, you look just you know, look very similar to him. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but Captain Edward Nordine died serving our country, and he was buried with full mil military honors in Arlington National Cemetery, and was very well liked and respected among military uh, the whole military community. Yeah. His death was sudden, and it was tragic. And, uh, and it's not something that we talk about often, mm -hmm. um, but we want to share it with you tonight because, you know, Bill has, uh, Apostle Bill's been through quite a bit. His whole family has. And uh, we need to share this story to help bring healing to others. Amen. Absolutely. You know, it, it was in the world news when your when your dad died yeah. and, and his story broke in major newspapers. And it was uh, it was in uh, Newsweek. Yeah. And it was in Time magazine. Absolutely. Um, and I remember when this happened because I, we were in the same friend group. Mm -hmm. We 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 uh, ran with the same friends in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. and uh, all of us were very concerned as you walk through this time in your life. Um, what can you share with our viewers uh, about how your father was taken from this life, and and what was really going on? Uh, what you know what happened? And we're going to ask our our um, our producer to share some articles and things on the screen as you're talking about this. Absolutely. So um, when he was killed. Um, he uh, he was actually scheduled to be relieved from that duty station uh, in Greece um, and um, was told that it was possible that he was going to um, even possibly retire from the military and go into po uh, politics. Wow. Um, so I, I really don't have a, a lot of information about that. It's been a long time. And, you know, the circumstances surrounding that was um, was kind of weird because the security detail was lifted, um, you know, like a week before this happened, a few days before this happened. All of a sudden, the security detail that followed him everywhere, that that swept the streets to make sure that nothing was going on in and around where he lived, uh, in his route to the embassy. I mean, they really watched over him and that detail was taken from him right before he was going to leave, right before he was going to leave. And we're still not sure why they took that security detail. And so they talk about that a lot uh, sure. <laughs> in the training yes. on this. And so, you know, uh, he still had someone at his home and, um, you know, they, um, they, they had one person that stayed there, but the rest of the team was, was, was pulled away. And, so he went to, to leave on the morning of uh, Tuesday, June 28th in 1988, um, left his house, got in his car. And um, as he drove down the street, um, a bomb was detonated. Um, from things that were told to me, um, basically, uh, the blast from that was so tremendous that it completely and through the pictures you'll be able to see some uh, of these pictures show the car was just completely uh, just shredded. And his car was an armored. It was car. an armored car. And so, so this yeah. was really planned out. It was not... yeah, it was really yeah. planned out um, to the last detail. And and a lot more of the you know, there's a lot of horrific details that are in these articles that we won't share with you, but we're right. uh, we're showing you some of the articles. But uh, he was ejected uh, in from the car and everything during it was it was pretty horrific. It it was and um, it wasn't too far from the house where they were living. So uh, at the time, uh, he was there uh, with his new wife and my half sister, yes. um, who was very young at the time. I think she was maybe eight or nine years old wow. or something like that. So they actually um, were right there to to witness what oh, happened, which is horrible. you know. I, I that, that really ripped my heart uh, for for years and years to to know that you know they had to to see that right yeah Amen. 
Yeah. And well, you know, he he was he was murdered by terrorists. Yes, he was. And it was a group called November the seven November seventeenth. Yes. And uh, and and they were named for a, a day in nineteen seventy three when troops crushed a student rebellion in Athens Polytechnic uh, uh, University mm -hmm. that were that were against right wing dictatorship at the time. Right. So they named their group after that date. Right. Uh, and so. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Well, you know, um, from from what I understand, a lot of that had to do um, some of the uh, U.S. military got involved in that. So and um, and because there was some uh, w during that uprising, there was some tragic, you know, things that happened there mm -hmm. with some people that, that uh, lost their life. So this particular group, mm -hmm. uh, they blamed the U.S. military for mm -hmm. that. So um you know the uh there was a police expert that refused to be named that said that the group planned out every detail and um they had uh you know piled bags of cement up against the side of the car that was facing away from the street so it was like a booby pet the booby trap so car. that the force would be um mm. you know propelled towards the street to where he was going to be so driving he drove by past. right yeah so um that vehicle um, was detonated uh, from a, uh, a vantage point right down the street where I was told that there was two people on a motorcycle wow. um, sitting at the end of the street. So when they saw him right there, boom, they hit the button. Wow. And so the, the, uh, the car was completely uh, destroyed mm. at that point. Mm. And um, yeah, so that, you know, it was, uh, it was definitely a, a tragic thing, you know, and, tragic. and we had already said that he was laid to rest in Arlington National C uh, Cemetery with full, full honors. And he deserved every honor. Absolutely. Amen. You know, and, and the tragic thing is here that he wasn't the only uh, attache that ever held that post to lose his life. Um, there has been five American embassy employees that have been killed over there uh, by this particular terrorist group. And um, I believe either was it was two or three of them were attachés. They held the same position right. as my father did. So um, you know, it's he he took that regardless. He took the position regardless, knowing that he was going there and that he wasn't the first. Mm. That was you know he um, took the risk. Yeah, yeah. He did it for our country. He did. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, well, they did, did find the, the the leading member of the terrorist group, correct? Yeah, they did. They they arrested um, the. The main guy there, um, you know, it was, and it's kind of ironic because it was 14 years and one day after uh, they took my father's life that um, they arrested. And I'm not sure if I'm saying this person's name correct, but I believe it's pronounced uh, Savas Ziris. And uh, he was the, the lead guy. And um, he, he was a very, very bad person, and yes. he was in charge of a lot of uh, murders and assassinations and, and bombings. And I mean, he robberies was just even. robberies. Yeah, because I mean, they had to fund what they were doing. Sure. So, that, so you know, that goes hand in hand with uh, that kind of organization. Uh, but he, he actually got arrested uh, at a port just after a bomb exploded in his own hands. Well, you know, God will say enough's enough. How about that, Amen. right? So, yeah, so Amen. he was put on trial and he was convicted and sentenced to life and imprisoned. You know, and, and, and not only did you have to work, you, we'll get to some of the forgiving and everything mm -hmm. uh, we get closer to, you know, through this story, but there was just a lot there to, that you had to work through. Absolutely. You know, and, and we really thank you so much for sharing that because I know that that was not easy for you. Yeah. But we want to bring glory to God today. Amen. And for all that he's done. Yeah. Um, now that our viewers uh, know that you know your dad, who he was, yeah. and a little bit about the, you know, the backstory, we'd like to to uh, to hear a little bit more about the the, uh, the family backstory mm -hmm. um, that really affected your life for many years. Mm -hmm. um, there, there was a, de a devastating breakup I understand between your your mom and your your, your dad, and yeah. um, when you were a little boy, and it resulted in years of wondering when you know when your dad was going to come see you, mm -hmm. when he was going to answer your letters and your cards, and your parents lived in a really different a big the time that they lived in was so different than the time we live now, yeah. and uh and and things were just different, yeah. and 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 their breakup uh, landed your you and your mother back here in the states. Mm -hmm. 
while your father began a new life with a second wife mm -hmm. and um, things were not really handled well, but do you remember, um, what do you remember about your dad and, and were there any tender memory memories when you were young? Um, well, you know, I, I do. Well, the great part about this uh, story is that I do have a lot of pictures from, you know, the time I was born yes. and him holding me and playing with me up until, you know, I was about two years old. And that's when we, cause we were in England, mm -hmm. um, up until that point, uh, he was, like I said earlier, he was a trainer in the helicopter, uh, for the helicopter pilots for the Royal, uh, British Royal Air Force. And so we were stationed over there in England. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I spent the, my first two years of life in England. So I have a lot of pictures of him and my mom and, you know, happiness and holding and playing and all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, the, and, and it, it's, uh, so I, I know that he, um, he loved me, Absolutely. you know, yeah. um, but he made some decisions and, um, and, you know, through his decisions that, he made it, it caused, um, my mom and I not to be able to stay there anymore. Yes. And so, and, and, you know, I'm, we're not going to go into a lot of details about what happened there and, and what in, and this All and that, that and the other, but what happened was we came back to the States when I was, you know, right after I was two, two and a half years old. And, um, I did see him a couple of times, um, after that, when he had come back to the States, um, we actually lived in uh, Virginia Beach, uh -huh. uh, and he actually lived in Virginia Beach as well. Wow. He had a house um, there uh, that uh, um, he had purchased, and we were actually going to try and, you know, as a family again, but in, in, things just didn't work out. So, um, so I would stay there with him, and I so I have very, very limited memories about that. But once one thing I do remember is he wasn't here very long and he went to, uh, up North to Rhode Island and bought a house in Rhode Island. And I went there and visited him a couple of times. And, um, I remember, um, you know, one time that, uh, I, I did go up there. I think I was about five years old, getting ready to enter into the, the schooling years as a, as a child. And, uh, my mom put me on the plane. I went up and, um, after the end of the visit, you know, mom was checking in to make sure that everything was going good. And, and my dad actually informed my mom that, um, he wasn't going to put me on the plane and he was going to keep me. This and, is when you uh, flew over there. When I flew up to Rhode Island. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. um, and, and he's like, you know, we've enrolled him in school because he would, he was already married, you know, right. to his second wife. And he's like, we've already enrolled him in school and he's going to be well taken care of. And my mom's like, yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what you were thinking there, but that that's not how this is going to go down. So, um, you know, right after that happened, um, it really caused um, him to really cut ties. Mm. And so from the time I was five on, I, I think I had received one, uh, like a, a, a model ship, a wooden ship from yes, we still like, have uh, Spain or something. Yes. It's really, really uh, a, a nice flagship. Um, but you know, I, I didn't get any cards and I didn't get any letters and, you know, every once in a while I would hear something, but, and my mom would always say, oh, you know, he's really, a, he's a busy man. And, uh, so I would just keep sending letters and sending mm -hmm. cards and all that kind of stuff. But, um, yeah, so, um, you know, for all those years, my mom just kind of kept everything going by telling me how busy he was and, you know, um, he had just went on with his life right. and eventually um, years, you know, into this, uh, I think I was probably, I don't know, um, nine or so years old. They had a, a daughter and, you know, so he, he just had, uh, he, he had his own life that he wanted to, to try and, and live. And I just wasn't going to be a part of that for some right. reason. I was, I was a family secret. Well, as, as your father remarried, when, when he did go on with his life, you, you did become that family secret. Mm -hmm. it, and it was a, it was a big secret. It really was. It was a big secret with, with, so. uh, <laughs> and it was curious. It was, there was so many lies, so many lies yeah. on his side of the family throughout several relatives, mm -hmm. really to keep, to keep, uh, your, your half sister from knowing that you existed. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and your mother would take you to Wisconsin 
and you'd stay there for visits with your grandmother oh yeah his mother and yeah. and have great time with the relatives and everything right. But uh, but what would happen if, with if he would bring his his uh, family there? Yeah, so you know, um, I would go there and spend a couple of weeks in the summertime, mm -hmm. and sometimes I'd go up there in wintertime mm -hmm. um, for, at Christmas or whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, so if my visit and their visit to Wisconsin would be anywhere close in proximity, right. things would have to be changed on my side. Right. So there was times where I didn't get to go. Right. And I was like, why? You know, kind of you thing. Yeah, yeah. So, but my grandmother was made to take all my pictures down. Mm. There was not to be anything that would show that I even existed in her house. And and he said, you know what? This is how it's going to be. If you want us to come see you and you want, you know, me to come see you mm. and all, you know, uh, he said, this is, this is the stipulations. And it really all came from, his, his second his wife. wife. Yeah. yeah. She just really didn't want their daughter to know that there was a past life on his she, side. Yeah. She had this fantasy about her daughter and thinking that her daddy was only hers. Right. Kind of thing. Right. Yeah. So it, yeah. it's, you know, it's really hurtful, not only for me, mm -hmm. but for her as well. Well, I'm sure she suffered a lot. Well, yeah, later, uh, yeah. especially when she found out that all oh, that she, you know, yeah. What she thought was real, absolutely. But, um, but you know, this caused resentment and allowed a lot of, uh, you know, basically a, some an orphan spirit that you mm -hmm. know, a spirit of rejection, absolutely, to operate in your life. Yeah. And um, you know, it, I'm sure that was very hard, you know, to deal with. Sure, uh, yeah, especially as I got older. Yeah. Because when I was younger, I didn't realize what was going on. Right. But when I when I got in my teen years, mm -hmm. um, I did find out. So that really, that's when it was like, oh my gosh. But you know, you had an encounter with the Lord that really <laughs> began to change yes, I did. everything. Yeah. Right as the time that you were learning some things that yeah. you thought to be true. That's right. And then you realize all this other things, yeah. all this other, the, this is the real story. That's right. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about, um, you know, your encounter with the Lord that really changed your life. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and, uh, and I'm sure that the viewers will here. Absolutely. So, you know, um, I just want to say that um, my mom did get remarried and I did have a stepdad, dad, you know, growing up. Uh, it's not the same, of course, um, even though he, he did the best that he could do. Right. Um, and so um, my parents both, um, my, my stepdad and my mom both worked for CBN, yes, Christian Broadcasting yes. Network. And um, so we were going to Florida, to Miami for a big America for Jesus rally that was happening down there. And it was in the very early 80s, 80, 81, something like that. Your, your and, stepfather actually was on Pat Robertson's security yeah, detail. That's, yeah, he was actually his personal. Fred, Fred Edis, yeah, is, is yeah. Your, your stepfather that that's raised right. you. Yeah, and yeah, he, uh, he was actually um, the man that was with Pat everywhere Pat went. You know, my stepdad went. And this and is before he ran for president. That's right. Yeah. And, uh, and while everything was being built up security wise, detail wise, um, you know, Fred had an, an integral part of that yes. with his, uh, his, his and your, uh, your mother was training in the artist. police department. Yeah. And my mom worked for the uh, production uh, department there at CBN. Uh, at CBN. So um, we went on this, um, this uh, America for Jesus rally uh, down in Miami. And um, during the, the time we were there, we were there for almost a week. And uh, it was an amazing thing because I was meeting all kinds of people and, and hearing all kinds of amazing preaching and, and worship. And I was very young. Um, I was 12, 13 years old, something like that. Yeah. Um, and so uh, we were at one night, we were in the Gator Bowl, the old Gator Bowl in Miami. Yes. And there was uh, worship going on and praise and, and the stands were, you know, uh, filled with people and they didn't allow um, any people down on the grass because that was one of the stipulations that of, of using the, uh, the Gator Bowl that they didn't want a lot of foot traffic down there. So it was just the platform and, and everything that went along with the production of that. But um, I was able to get down there yeah. because I had a security clearance pass. So I got down on the field. And my mom was like right there at the first row, second row, whatever, at the wall there. Keep and so, yeah, you. you know, I yeah. got down and I just was kind of 
just taking everything in and there was like this little mist in the air and mm -hmm. so i was looking up and all the stadium lights were on and worship was going on and then all of a sudden bam i just got hit with the holy ghost <laughs> and i started jumping and I started dancing and I threw my hands in the air and I had such a relief come over me. Amen. There's such a warmth and a relief that came over me. And I just started praising and I had Hallelujah. tears going down my face. And of course, you know, when I turned to look um, after, I don't know how long it was, I, of course, my mom was right there in the stands and, you know, she was uh, emotional as you can imagine. But I had an amazing encounter that night that changed my life. But I'm sure that it, it the, the Lord allowed you to know that you were fully wanted, yeah, fully accepted, regardless, and deeply loved, yeah, yeah. and um, and knowing that, yeah. that, you met you met God as Father that night. I did, I did, yeah, and it was, it, you know, that night carried me through a lot of later teen years. Yes, where. God was there with me. He was, God protected he was a father me. To you. He had he had a plan and a purpose for me. Yes. And I I can look back at my life and go, "Wow, God. <laughs> I really made you work." <laughs> <laughs> it was nothing for him. Yeah. And he loves you so much. He'd do it over and over. That's right. You. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But it was awesome. <laughs> So you have this great encounter with God and yeah. you find him as father. And that's key mm -hmm. because there's so many out there. They, they look at God mm -hmm. and they think God is like an earthly father Yeah, that they, you know, whatever their earthly father was to them, they look at that through, through to God, their yeah. heavenly father through that lens. Mm -hmm. And we're going to tell you tonight that your heavenly father is nothing like your earthly father. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's, he, he, all the good things from your earthly father times the, the largest number times infinity. You, can, you can imagine <laughs> yeah. um, is all goodness towards you. Yeah. And, um, and he's there to answer your prayers and to yeah. talk with you face to face, one-on-one, -on -one, be there, let you feel his presence, mm -hmm. his tangible presence. Amen. Amen. Yeah, and his absolutely. Voice. Absolutely. Amen. Yeah. And so thankful that you had that mm -hmm. and you were learning how to lean on the Lord yeah. as you were finding out, you know, these things with yeah. your dad. And, and, and so you, on your graduation day, uh, I believe it was your graduation day, you got a phone call Yeah, I did. and uh, and it was unexpected. So, you yeah, know, if you totally were, shocked. if you were a little bit more prepared, it, it may have went a little, a little bit well better, but maybe not, I don't know. but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it, that you got a phone call that yeah. you were not expecting, yeah. uh, from your father. Yeah. And, uh, in the phone call, uh, it, it was, um, it didn't go as well uh, as, as he probably hoped, but I'm sure that he was not really knowing what to say. Um, no, yeah, 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 I'm sure he, he after, all had, those years. after a lot. Yeah, we're, we're talking of, you know, 13 years with no contact. So all those uh, feelings him were rushing in. Sure, yeah. yeah. So, you know, his mom, my grandmother, and my great aunt, his aunt, were at my graduation here in Virginia Beach. Mm -hmm. And, um, so they had set it up. I, I guess my grandmother said, you better call him. <laughs> He's graduating high school. Right. So, you know, he, he calls and I I'm told that there's a, a phone call for me. And, you know, there's a lot of activity going on. We're at the house and everybody's excited. I'm super excited because I'm graduated high school. And, and, and so I'm like, okay, well, so I'm going to take this phone call. I had no idea who it was. I get on the phone and it's my dad. And you haven't and I'm like, heard his voice wow. yeah. or talked to him since you were five. Yeah. Yes. So, yes. you know, he's, he asked me, uh, uh, he, he said, so congratulations kind of thing, you know? And I'm like, well, thank you. And he's like, so how were your grades? Yeah. And I'm like, wow. Oh, that's, that's question good. number one <laughs> after all these years. He said, how are your grades? Yes. And I was like, well, uh, I guess they were okay, mm -hmm. you know? And he's like, well, what college do you want to go to? And I'm like, wow, this is, this is this, not, this, we need to have a different conversation yeah. before this so, conversation. Yeah. If there's dads out there and, and you you need to reach out to your children that you have not had contact with, this is what not to do. <laughs> and you know, you, you, you really want to come at it from a different angle and just say, you know, how are you? I've missed you. How are you? Um, I, I've been thinking about you. Congratulations. I'm so proud of you. Um, 
can I do anything for you? Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> yes. I, I would like to see you soon. I mean, anything, but <laughs> say, how are your grades and what college do you want to go to? Yes, yeah. And so that time. was pretty much the end of the conversation. Right. I didn't, I was just like, you know, after all this time, that's, that's how you're going to talk. Well, you were you know? hurt. You I know? was very hurt. Yeah. That, and I just couldn't believe that, you know, that's the way that he was going to come into For the, the conversation. first conversation. Yeah. And it, so yeah. it ended. Um, it ended. Yeah. So, so three years later, uh, there's still no conversation after that. No. And uh, so three years later is will, really when all this tragic thing happened with your dad. That's right. And, um, and he was actually getting ready to come back. To yeah. He had two more weeks. Um, and they, they, well, you know, the terrorists knew that. They knew that the time was running out to get him. Right. Because he was on their hit list. Yeah. yeah. So, so you, you've gone through this conversation with your dad you still, now that you haven't talked to him for another three years and, uh, and there, and you're still, but it, it, the, the phone call caused a hope in you that one day when he would possibly come back to the States that you may have a relationship with him. And Absolutely. He able, so even, even though it didn't go very well, right. there was still hope in you. Absolutely. And you were furthering your, 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 uh, you being led of the Lord and mm -hmm. forgiveness and everything you were being, you were trying to get prepared for a day to be able to talk with him. Yeah. And, and then everything happens. Right. This tragic sudden thing happens, but yeah. to further the offense, uh, you didn't, it didn't go very well. Not very good decisions were made at his funeral. Well, yeah. So, you know, we have to remember the whole time that I'm still a secret now. From even your though, sister. Yeah. Yes. Even though now I'm 21. Right. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's 1988. I'm 21 years old. Right. I'm still a secret. He's been murdered, assassinated, really. And now the funeral is being held up in D.C., Mm -hmm. and um, at Arlington National Cemetery. So I do get invited to that. Right. But here's the thing. I had a private conversation uh, with one of the family members um, on his side, and uh, I, I was given uh, five minutes um, in a cold concrete room with his casket. Mm -hmm. And um, then uh, at that point, um, I was uh, escorted to where I was going to be for the funeral. But the, you know, the thing is that, you know, and they who were you escorted by. Well, so here's the thing. When I was brought into Washington, I was flown from uh, here in, in Virginia beach up to Washington DC. I was met by a Naval officer that was um, basically an, an officer that handled things like this for family and stuff right. mm -hmm. um, that were coming in for, for, funerals. Mm -hmm. And so he and his family were kind of like my uh, uh, escorts, I guess you could okay. say, while I while I came in. So they brought me to the hotel that I was staying at, which was nowhere near the rest of the family. Right. And they, they, they took me into their home for dinner that night and then brought me That's back. Nice. And yeah, so then when I got picked up in the morning, uh, I was taken to the meeting where I got to spend the five minutes uh, with the casket. And um then I was told that I was not allowed mm. uh, to have any contact with any of the family, especially my grandmother, uh, because um, this particular family member said that I was going to be the cause of more hurt uh, and could cause my grandmother, you know, to uh have a stroke, a stroke. yeah i mean who knows what well she was so, really suffering she was oh, because of the decisions of, of you being yeah uh pushed aside so yeah. uh so yeah it, it was just a very terrible so situation you watched the funeral from the very back from the, i was in the very back of this massive uh uh auditorium not an auditorium but a, a chapel mm -hmm. um there was hundreds and hundreds of people there dignitaries from all over the world and so I had two armed escorts on one on each side of me from the Marines. Uh, thank you for your service, gentlemen. Um, but they made sure that I stayed quiet and that I wasn't seen. And you weren't seen by anyone. Of yeah, them. it was it was like uh, it really tore my heart. Sure. Absolutely. You know, and that. yeah, so that was that was for the chapel service. And then once all the family. I, as the, as the family were, were coming out from the service, I, I was 
at an angle to where I could see every single one of them as they were walking by and a lot of them just walked by, but I caught a couple of my cousins. They, they found me cause they were like, where is Billy? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what everybody called me, Billy. Um, and so, but a couple of them saw me and their eyes were biggest saucers cause they saw that I had two military Marines you know, on each side of me and they're like, what in the world? Right. So yeah, and then at the grave site, of course, I was held back. I couldn't get anywhere near the grave site. And then after everything was over, then I could go over and and, and after everybody was gone. So, there so was it was just a lot of forgiveness yeah, I, that had to come yeah. through your relationship and sanctification with the Lord yeah. for your father. Right. And now he's gone. Mm -hmm. So there you had to find a way through prayer to for, forgive him and find mm -hmm. closure yeah. when he wasn't even on this earth anymore. Right. And then, yeah. and then for all the family members that went along with the lies, went along with everything. I and had also to yeah. forgive the, the assassin. Well, absolutely. And so, yeah. because God said, you got to forgive That's right. or else he won't forgive us. That's so, right. Yeah. But it was only by the grace of God that you were able to forgive them. Amen. That's right. Yeah. But you know, it took years uh, of being, of having to do that, uh, and, and deliverance, and 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 prayer. Amen. Yeah. So. So your relationship with yeah, the Lord. Absolutely. Absolutely. Amen. Well, now we're going to fast forward. Yeah. We're going to thank you for sharing all of that. Amen. Yeah. So now we're going to fast forward to a happier, a happier story. Yeah. But it's uh, <laughs> it was pretty powerful. Amen. Um, to 2017. Mm -hmm. In February 2017, we were at a minister's conference in North Carolina. We received a prophetic word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And um, and there were many things that were in the word uh, mm -hmm. that were confirmed and also a lot of directional, directional things for us as ministers and yeah. our ministry. And um, but you know that what was spoke that day in that word was um through a minister is he said, Bill, do you have in the natural brother? <laughs> And I, I can still hear you saying what you said. Mm -hmm. What did you say? No, I do not. I do not. Mm -mm. And uh, you always wanted a brother. Oh, yeah. I always absolutely. wanted a brother. And, yeah. uh, and and he says, well, let me tell you what I see. Mm -hmm. He says, God is, God is going to open a message to, to you. He's going to give you a new message a new in your message. heart. Yeah. In your heart. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I see a brother standing next to you. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, well, maybe, maybe it's someone like a brother. Mm hmm I, I see a pastor. Mm -hmm. So, and, and then he goes on, yeah. he goes on and, and he says, he's going to help you and he's going to help you to step into your next place of fruitfulness. Yeah. And, um, and, and then the other minister said, I see you two going North and I don't know why, but I even see you going into California, mm -hmm. getting into California. Mm -hmm. And, um, and we, we, um, we, we both want to share a little bit about this because, <laughs> this was There's twofold. Yeah. This was twofold yeah. about the brother. That's right. Okay, so um, the new message in your heart. What was the, what was the name of the message? Yeah. So the Lord put on my heart to uh, write a message called "Lay It on the Altar," and so you know this was an <laughs> like amazing. All this stuff. Yeah. Is perfect. You lay I mean, it down. You, you know at the this. Feet. This right here. This is a great moment for us to tell you that you have to lay it all on the altar. You have to get it on the you, altar. You got to get it. It doesn't belong to you. You got to let it go so that yeah. God can do the work and you can get your healing. You've got to forgive so, them whether they're in this life or not. Amen. So amen. I wrote this message. Lay it on the altar. We had two back-to-back -back meetings. And, and my mom was at both of these meetings. Yes. So she heard the first time. That's right. Right. Mm -hmm. And so she was like, wow, because there were some things happening in the background that we didn't, we know, didn't about. know about. That's right. And so then the next weekend, she came to that particular service, too, because it was local as well. And after the service, I, I did that message again. And she's wrecked because now there's something else that's. That's, that's happened. Transpired. Yeah. Yes. And so she says, she comes up to us after the meeting. She's like, um, I need to come over and I've, um, got something. I've got something that I need to talk to you about. No, she said, I got something I need to lay on the altar. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I, we I both, got something our, to lay our on the flags altar. went, yeah. you know, what, what is this? And yeah. we're like, okay, well come on over tomorrow and, yeah. and, uh, 
Can I tell this part? Yeah, go she ahead. comes in and she's shaking like a leaf. Oh, she is too. And she's got this purple envelope, you know, it's purple folder. Folder. And she's shaking and, and we're like, whatever you gotta tell us, it's gonna be it's okay. Gonna be and okay. we're gonna love you no matter what you right. got to tell us. Yeah. And uh and so we sat her down and she's like, Well, you know, she, she's telling this and this and um, well, um, and and she she begins to tell us about an ancestry search. Ancestry doc. Yeah, that the ancestry thing mm -hmm. company. Yeah, yeah. So you want to tell this one? Um, uh, sh sure. Yeah. So she starts talking about ancestry, and um, she said that you know, um, I had someone reach out to me, and so because one of my cousins is the ambassador of my mom's ancestry account, everything went through my cousin mm -hmm. to get to my mom. That's right. And um, basically, my mom says, um, you have a brother. <laughs> and I'm like, and you're like, what? Okay. What? I, what did you just say? So this is a really long story, but gotta shorten it for we got to shorten sake. it for time's sake. But what had happened is her, she had met my dad. They were going to be married. They were engaged. Mm -hmm. This was the early sixties. And unfortunately my mom got pregnant. Well, my dad being a young Naval well, officer, fortunately, but... well, yeah, <laughs> well, unfortunately too, but for the timing for the mm -hmm. timing. Mm -hmm. Um, my dad, my dad being an, a, a young officer didn't want this to tarnish his, no, his career, career. Mm -hmm. uh, to, to have a, a child, you know, uh, out of wedlock, even though they were still, they were still like, Planning had to a plan married. to get married. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So he actually uh, made arrangements for my mom to have my brother and then they put him up for adoption. Yes. Yeah. And he was adopted by a military family. He was adop adopted right by a military out doctor of, uh, out of Norfolk. Norfolk. Yeah. Maybe. And uh, yeah. And, um, you know, so, yeah. Uh, and his name is? His name's Andrew. Andrew. My brother. Amen. And so I just was like floored. My mom's telling me this. She's crying. I'm crying. I couldn't believe, you know, and she's like, so many times wanted to tell you and never knew. I didn't even know if he was alive. Maybe our and, producer can pop his wow. picture. There he is. Yeah, right there he is. Andrew. You know, that's my brother. And um, so... <laughs> Yeah, it's it's been it's been so it's been bittersweet, you know, Amen. because I've wanted a brother for all these years, and now I finally got one. And we it's know, like, wow! In that prophetic word, the the other minister said, "I see you going north." Yeah, and I see you going west. west. Mm -hmm. And where does where does Andrew live? My brother lives in Seattle, Washington. <laughs> it's the most northwest corner of yeah. the United States yeah. that there is. That's right. But you know what? It was really twofold. When uh, when this minister uh, was talking about, I see a brother. Yeah. Because the Lord uh, the Lord moved our our, our ministry uh, last year, and we were ordained by AMF, and um, and and his brother uh, is not a pastor. Right. But our our new up behind, of course, is Apostle Al G. Fornis. Yeah. And uh, this in this prophetic word, it, it says, "I see you going north." I see you going west, and I see you even getting into California. Yeah. Well, Apostle Dr. Algie Fornis lives in California. in California. So last year we flew out to California, and we were uh, ordained into his ministry. Yes. Uh, we changed fellowship, and uh, he is now our apostle. Love you, apostle. And we love Apostle uh, Dr. Algie Fornis. Yep. And uh, we are doing so well. Our ministry is doing so well under his his organization. And uh, so there's a lesson here. Yeah. If you get a prophetic word and you don't understand <laughs> it, Come because on. when we were standing there and he were out, they, you were being asked, do you have a brother? And you knew you didn't have a brother. Right. You always wanted a brother. Yeah. And you've got a full blood brother. I mean, from the really? same parents. Yeah. And, Dad uh, and mom. Amen. Wow. And so we want to, uh, we would like to, to, uh, show the clip because it was just this past summer. Yes. It was September, right? Wasn't finally, it September? I believe so. Um, you got to finally meet him. Andrew came here. Yes. And so we have a clip that we can show of the meeting after 50 some years uh, in the making of Andrew coming into Norfolk International Airport and uh, 
you'll see him hugging my mom. Like, you'll on. see him hugging me. Let's show the, let's show yeah, the clip. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. We're so glad that you were able to see that. We were able to share that with you. Yeah. And uh, we want to pray for our viewers today because you, you may have a prophetic word that you don't understand. You, right. you may be dealing with not having closure from right. a lost family member or, or someone that uh, you didn't get to forgive them in person. You didn't get to work things out in person. We yeah. want to pray and ask the Lord to to break that some things off and, Absolutely. and, uh, and, and give you a grace to forgive. Yeah. So that you can be free. You know, because a lot of times you'll find in life when someone disappoints you and you don't have closure and they pass away, mm -hmm. it makes it even more difficult for you to get that that freedom. That's right. Um, but there's a way. There's a way. And his name is Jesus. Yeah. And he can provide a pathway for your, your wholeness That's and right. for your forgiveness to come forth. And a lot of times we'll take the guilt of things and we'll put it on ourselves. So we have to forgive ourselves too for feeling the way we feel, yeah, yeah. you know, and it, it's, I'm telling you right now, it's going to be a release like you've never felt before. Yeah. And we're going to pray right now that uh, those that are watching that are in need yeah. to, to have this kind of thing released from them. That's right. Um, it, this is not yours. So you need to get rid of it. You That's need right. to lay it on the altar tonight. Amen. Get rid of it. Amen. Because I'm telling you right now, God wants to, to give you uh, freedom in your mind and in your body because it's this, these things can cause you to have illness in your body. Yes. And we want you to be whole. And so does the Lord God Almighty. Yes. So th this is this is what we're going to do. We're going to pray right now. Just like break Amen. off the orphan spirit. We're going to break it break, all break off. Break off a spirit of rejection. Absolutely. And uh, and we're going to release forgiveness. Praise gonna, the Lord. We're going to release people. Absolutely. So Heavenly Father, we thank you right now, yes, God, Lord. that we know that you are on the throne, Father. You're on the throne of our hearts, God. And whatever the offense may have been, Father God, in our lives, God, we believe that you can take it from us right now. So, God, we decree and we declare over the viewers right now, Father God, that the past hurts and the disappointments and all of the unforgiveness that they have had to walk through all the years of their lives and, and the torment and the disappointment, Father God, God, that they would find you finally, God, as their one true Father that won't disappoint them, that won't leave them, that won't turn their back. Father, we thank you right now, God, that your power, Father God, your authority right now, Father, will release everyone yes. watching. Yes. Everyone here in this right now can be released. And we say be released yes. from that spirit of rejection. Yes. Be released from that orphan break. spirit. We break it right now in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we lose healing right now to you. We thank you, Father God. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're going forth right now with power and authority from the throne room on high and that you are healing, that you are making whole the hearts and the minds of the watchers and the listeners right now, Father God. And God, we give you glory and we give you honor for doing it, Father God. Yes. Touch them, God. Touch them. Release them. Deliver them, Father, right now. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Father, right now, Lord, if, if any viewer has not found you as Father, mm. Lord Father, we ask right now for, for you to move and do the necessary work of your spirit. Yes, Lord. Lord God, on the and take the veil off their heart yes. so they can see the kingdom of heaven and that they can call you, Lord. Yes. And Lord Father, give them a grace, Lord. Yes, So God. Lord, have a lean on you. Lean on you as Father God. Yes. Lord Father, that they, they would they would be revealed to them. Lord Father, how good you are. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So we want to thank you all for joining us today for this very special mm. Testimony Tuesday. And uh, we want you to know that we continue to pray over all of our viewers Absolutely. for weeks and weeks after our show. So please, if you're viewing this, this message, whether it's live or, or, or later, or that's been posted, comment under this, this message and leave your prayer requests with us because our team is always looking on our page and we're praying for you Absolutely. all the time, every day. Absolutely. So we, we want to hear from you. Amen. So we thank you for joining us here and uh, at High Tower Ministries. Amen. Amen. You know what though? I, I just want to, I just, oh, yes. I feel like we should pray. We have a few minutes Okay. and there are some people on here. Oh. They're suffering. Amen. And they're, they're watching us from all over the world the and they have illnesses and they have things that they're going through. Amen. And I just wanted to, to let you know Amen. that Jesus is here for you. Amen. Brother and sister, right now, if you are sick in your body, if you have a need, if you have a need, we say lay it on the altar. Yes. Look, your sickness and your lack, they are not yours. You got to give them back. Yes. To the enemy. Hallelujah. The enemy is, is the one that brings lack. The enemy is the one that brings the illness. Yes. Not our Lord. Not our Father. So we say right now. Illness right now. Be replaced with wholeness. Lack. Be replaced with abundance. Oh God. We say right now. Marriages are restored. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father God. We say heal the cancers. Heal the diabetes. Is there is there specific ones that you wanted to uh, to to, to uh, call out right now? Um, well, yes, I, I can't see it on my end. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I I don't see anything specific okay. here, but I just felt like yes, in the spirit, we needed to pray for for you specifically. Look, this, yes. this might seem like a general prayer that's going out for everyone, but you need to grab a hold of what God has for you right now. Because I'm telling you, if we're calling it out, it's yours. If you have high blood pressure and you need your blood pressure to be regulated, we say blood pressure pressure be regulated. If you have heart conditions right now, have a new heart in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Receive that new heart. New, new valves, the chambers restored in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Arteries unblocked right now. Lung disease, we come against you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We say that all your bronchioles are clear and free. Diabetes has to go in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not your portion. We bind up that spirit of rejection that even yes. ties to diabetes. We bind cancer. it. We cancel it off. We, we cancel you. We cancel you, cancer. We, we bind that. you in the name of the Lord that, Jesus that Christ. We curse it and, it and send it back it to, to, to the enemy in the name of the on their head. Lord God, we thank you, Father. You're doing it right now, God. Grab a hold of what God has for you right now. Come on, let your faith arise. Let your faith arise. The Lord said, if two or more gather in my name, I am in the midst. And right now, there is more than two of us. And I believe right now, God has got the ability yes, to touch Lord. your life right where you are. He can do it. There is nothing impossible for him. And there is no distance in the spirit. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank Hallelujah. You, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise your Lord, Father. Well, we will continue to pray also. You know, we've seen cancers be completely eradicated. Absolutely. We've seen deaf ears pop open. Yeah. And we've seen God uh, move on uh, on people's feet. Yes. And, uh, and, and they begin to walk easily again. That's right. We've seen it. Come on. Uh, Amen. Backs being straight. Uh, we've seen it. Amen. And we've seen how God is, has moved on mental illness. Yeah. Even and, and brought forth a uh, power, love and a sound mind. Come on. We're in the last uh, days. We have to expect, expect the miraculous Amen. to start happening. Yes. You know, expectation is faith. Yes. Amen. So we Absolutely. have the expectation of the Lord. Absolutely. Hallelujah. His anointing's here right now. The Lord Jesus um, Christ said, greater things shall you do. Yeah. Come on, we have to expect greater things. I, I, I sense that someone right now is dealing with cataracts right now and some eye issues. Mm, and come I on. Just, we just come against that right now. Every every demonic force is trying to bring blindness. We bind up in the name of the Lord Jesus yes. Christ. And we just lose the power of the Holy yes, Spirit, Lord. the gifts of healing, the working of miracles, the yes. of faith to come into operation right where you are. And we, we decree and declare a, a wholeness over you yes. from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. Hallelujah. And we say sight be restored yes. in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Be made whole. Wow. 
Mm, Amen. Mm, mm, mm. Hallelujah. Look, if that is you, I, we want you to want let to us you. know what God did for you. Amen. Come on, be a testimony here tonight. That's right. Let us know. Write to us. Uh, go, go on our website, HightowerMinistry.org. Let us know. Reach out to us. Amen. Come on, we, we're we're here for you. That's right. Hallelujah. And we hope this, this show has edified and encouraged you. Absolutely. And we thank you for joining us here Amen. For, for Testimony Tuesday. That's right. And, and we just, uh, we know that God is not done yet. Amen. Keep believing That's for your right. miracle. Hallelujah. And you know, pastors, we're available. If, if you we'd like to be part of your conference schedule or guest ministry schedule, if you'd like to reach out to us, you can do so by emailing us at bookings at hightowerministry.org. Amen. Reach out and, and keep sharing your comments with us. And if you have any personal prayer requests, yes. send them to prayer request at hightowerministry.org. That's right. And we want, to, we want you to get connected with Hightower. Become an eChurch member. And it's easy to do. You just register with us online at HightowerMinistry.org. Mm -hmm. And um, prayerfully consider becoming a monthly partner with, with us because everything that's given into this ministry is used to yes. share the gospel with Amen. the world. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And thank you for that. And while you're online, look us up on YouTube at Hightower Ministries International. Subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss a show. And don't forget, we have broadcasts that go out four times a week right here on Facebook. Look for our Greater Glory Prophetic Teaching every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. and 7 p.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. That's all Eastern Standard Time. And don't forget, Testimony Tuesdays is each and every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we have some really amazing guests lined up for us this season. Amen. Amen. And you know, you can take us on the go by searching us, uh, searching our website, not our website, I'm sorry, searching out our podcast. Uh, we've got podcasts out there That's right. that go out on Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Audible, Spotify. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's right. And Wherever you get all your you podcasts. Search High Tower Ministries Podcasts. We've got over 200 messages there for your spiritual growth. Amen. So thank you for joining us today. And don't forget to share this with somebody that needs to hear from God. And until next time, be blessed. Be blessed. Thank you for listening to the High Tower Ministries podcast. Our shows are broadcast each week on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. For more information about this ministry and to acquire our resource materials for spiritual growth, visit our website at www.hightowerministry.org. Look for High Tower Ministries on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Get connected with us. We would love to hear how the Lord is moving through this ministry and how the Word of God is impacting your life. Until next time, be blessed, and please don't forget to rate and review on Apple Podcast and subscribe wherever you listen so you don't miss a show.